What are step functions? Step function is a function that has more than one piece, and each piece is listed on its own line. So here's a piece that's x minus 2. Here's another piece that's x squared. How do I know when to use piece 1 and piece 2? Use the first piece when x is less than or equal to 1, and the second piece when x is between 1 and 9. So how do we go about graphing this? Well, we're going to use a table of values. Now, one's pretty important. When x is 1, what is y? Well, when x equals 1, we're going to use piece 1 here. So f of 1, we're using piece 1. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. And let's go for 0. What is f of 0? Well, 0 is less than or equal to 1, so we get 0 minus 2 equals negative 2. And we'll go ahead and do f of negative 1. So negative 1 is less than 1, so it's negative 1 minus 2 equals negative 3. So that, we, we could keep going and plug in negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, but uh, this will be enough for the pattern here. Now we're going to pick something bigger than 1, so we'll go for, uh, we could try 2. That'll work. x equals 2. What happens when x equals 2? We're going to use piece 2, and f of 2 is going to be 2 squared, which is 4. So plug in 2, f of 2 is 4. Plug in 3, and what is f of 3? 3 squared equals 9. Let's change the example and just go from 1 to 3. Like going all the way to 9. If I went all the way to 9, we'd have 81 here, and uh, let's just keep it reasonable right here. Now, we have to be careful. We don't actually plug in 3. We go close to 3, but we don't actually plug it in. So that won't be a point on the graph. So let's plot all these points. So we got 1 is really important. There's negative 1. Negative 3 on the y-axis, we have negative 1, negative 3, 0, negative 2, 1, negative 1. So we have these three points right here. We're going to see very soon as a linear function. It's going to make a line when we connect them together. This endpoint is important to keep in mind. I included this endpoint instead of drawing an empty dot. I drew a filled in dot right here because when x equals 1, we're in piece one. What happens when, when x is going to be bigger than one? Well, we're gonna use the x squared function. What does that look like? At one, we'd have negative, no. At two, we'd have four. Two would be way up here at four. And at three, we'll be here at nine. So two, four, three, nine. Now we wanna be careful we don't actually use the x value of 3. So we're going to go close to this point, but we're not going to include it. Now it's tempting to just draw this straight in here uh, with a line segment, but that's not what the graph actually looks like. If I, if I plug in 1 here, so this is not actually a point on the graph. This is not a point on the graph either. So I'm going to plug in 1. I'm going to use the wrong piece, which is piece 2. 1 squared is 1. So there is the point 1, 1. Now I'm not supposed to actually go to this point. I'm supposed to go close to it. So we're going to have empty dot, empty dot here. And now I'm going to connect these together. If my graph was a little better, this curve should have a slight bend to it. So I do not include either endpoint because I do not have equals here. This is an open interval. If I wrote it in interval notation, it would look like this. X is in the interval 1 to 3, so from 1 to 3, but do not include 1 or 3. What happens at 1? Our y value is negative 1. So at 1, our y value is negative 1. If we go just to the right of 1, we'll have a y value up on this curve.